and thank you for the possibility um, of uh, being here and talking today. Uh, I'm in my third year of PhD school and my research focuses on the visual aspect uh, of the representation of Jews in the satirical press uh, of the interwar period in Poland. And today I'll be talking uh, specifically about Yiddish satirical press. Uh, why do I think uh, this is interesting at all? Uh, firstly, this type of source, which is cartoon, intrigues me because it combines uh, two features. On the one hand, uh, it is a medium that reacts very quickly to reality and uh, reflects the current moods of the society. Um, but because of this, uh, it also uh, quickly becomes outdated. It becomes something hermetic, a kind of a puzzle that has to be solved. And on the other hand, uh, there are some constant elements in it, uh, recurring motifs, uh, some patterns or combination of uh, stereotypes that return. And I also think uh, that while written sources, including the press, are generally uh, well researched, uh, visual sources, in my case cartoons, are still somewhere in the background uh, when it comes to research. And uh, this is a field where, where a lot of work uh, can be done. Um, um, okay, so uh, when it comes to Yiddish satirical press uh, in interwar Poland, uh, there were a lot of ephemeral magazines, uh, one-day newspapers uh, published on the occasion of Jewish holidays, uh, but there were also Yiddish satirical weeklies uh, such as Der Freier Feugel, Der Blofer, uh, Der Mechabel, and uh, the overall number of the titles only of the satirical Yiddish journals, not including satirical columns of the newspaper or of the newspapers, uh, is estimated uh, to be at least uh, several dozens. And scholars uh, usually point out that uh, Jewish uh, humor uh, has some characteristic traits, and, and one of them is something called uh, cheerful pessimism, or as uh, Marian Fuchs uh, puts it, mirthful pessimism, which can be explained as, as laughter through tears. And one of the parodists even uh, used the uh, pseudonym the Lustiger Pessimist, uh, which uh, translates to cheerful pessimist, but obviously you, you know that. And um, I think that uh, this characteristic uh, can be seen very clearly in some of the materials that I use. And I believe that uh, you will also uh, see that in examples that I am going to uh, show. So as I said, satirical humor reflected the socioeconomic situation and problems of the era, and uh, the social problems of a multicultural country such as Poland at the time, uh, where anti-Semitism and the rise of nationalist organizations and political parties. And here is uh, one of a whole series of uh, jokes involving an interaction between a Jew and a Polish nationalist. Uh, here a Jew says to him, uh, Endek, so Mr. Endek, Endek is a term referring to the supporters of the nationalist right-wing party. Mir haben verhabt die ganze Erd in Polen. Was? Euf gekauft die ganze Erd? Nein, mir liegen in der Erd. So here, there are references to anti-Semitic prejudices connoting stereotypes about Jews such as greediness, conspiracy, and association with money and trade. And uh, these stereotypes are essentially the ABC of uh, nationalist prejudices against Jews. And the punchline, uh, we are lying in the ground, uh, is a very dark uh, reference uh, to the series of uh, pogroms happening in the 1930s in Poland. Uh, so this whole uh, series of jokes uses anti Semitic uh, obsessions and makes them the object of satire. And these particular uh, characters uh, are always uh, depicted in the same way, in a strong contrast. So the traditional figure uh, of the Jew here is a symbol of the entire Jewish community. And we can see uh, that he is significantly smaller uh, than the nationalist. And uh, so the Yiddish press portrayed uh, different aspects of uh, Polish-Jewish relations. And in this example, the cartoon makes fun of Polish attempts uh, to gain Jewish support during elections. 
and we can see a stereotypical pole depicted as a watchman or caretaker uh, who awkwardly addresses the Jewish community in broken Yiddish. So among his phrases, um, there is a jumble of Yiddish and Polish. It is something like, he says, Geerte Żydkes, ich już Żydowski język ken, matele mamele ich enk kusz hinten, ir mir glose dla mnie. Żydkes dobrze sein gut. So this is a linguistic mishmash uh, coupled with uh, the derogatory term Zhitkes, and it's, uh, it uh, adds a touch of absurdity and humor. And the joke targets the Pole's uh, shallow and temporary interest uh, in the unassimilated segment of the Jewish community uh, during electoral campaigns. It also uses a figure of a pole as a watchman, uh, which was often a case in the tenement houses inhabited by Jews um, in, in real life. And uh, the lines of division reflected in cartoon humor could also exist within the Jewish community, often stemming from political differences. Uh, in the depicted example, uh, the Orthodox Aguda Parte uh, becomes the subject of ridicule, with its activists uh, depicted as religious extremists uh, who turn a theater into a mikvah and force politicians of other parties uh, to wear prayer clothes uh, to pray and uh, to visit their ritual baths. In such representations, uh, religious symbols, which typically identify uh, Jews in general uh, in non-Jewish cartoons, uh, here uh, they sing signify a specific, uh, a specific political party. Uh, so the Streimel uh, assumes an identifying role. Uh, it is frequently used in Yiddish caricatures as a symbolic representation of Aguda. And uh, secular activists are distinguished uh, from members of uh, the Aguda uh, by their attire. They typically wear suits. And however, in Yiddish satirical drawings, uh, when a figure symbolizing the entire Jewish community is depicted, uh, certain uh, stereotypical features related uh, to appearance and dress are present, uh, such as bird, uh, a hat, or a coat. And on this occasion, uh, it is worth adding that these images did not function uh, in vacuum. Uh, Jewish artists uh, took over and reworked uh, images of Jews that had been functioning in culture for many decades, uh, if not hundreds of years. And because of that, some uh, self-stereotypical iconographic tropes are also found in uh, Jewish publications. And here are examples from um, the Yiddish magazines Der Letz and Der Mashhez. And the images uh, of uh, the characters were part of the logo of the title. So um, he, he, here is uh, a prank or, or a clown. Uh, and earlier I mentioned the parodying of Yiddish by Poles. Uh, in this case, uh, we have the opposite situation. Uh, the subject of uh, the joke are Jews uh, who uh, use a broken Polish in an attempt to assimilate. So the cartoon shows uh, Jews talking to each other while riding a tram. And it is a phonetic transcription of Polish conversation in Yiddish alphabet. And the conversation is about a girl who is getting married. Her mother owns a shop and um, she will get a good dowry. Her father will give her a house as soon as she gets married. Uh, and uh, I can read a part of it to you so you can see how Yiddish phrases are incorporated into the Polish language. So I will translate the, the Polish parts into English. And uh, it would be, uh, what are you saying to this uh, Moshe Mendele? He's getting married. What do you say? He's setting up a chupa? Uh, who is this bride? Balebosty girl. He gets a, a fetten naden. Uh, she has a Yerusha. Her mother has a kam. And her father left her a tzavoe. Uh, she will get the house as soon as she shrivened noim. So, this conversation is given originally in very clumsy and ungrammatical Polish, and there are Jewish terms related to um, Jewish rituals and uh, cultures, uh, such as Yerusha, Shreib and Tnoim, Tzavoe, Naden, Kram, Shiduch. And the joke was intended to mock those uh, trying to assimilate and abandon Yiddish. 
uh, and the mockery was aimed uh, at efforts to polonize uh, not only linguistically but also culturally. Mixed marriages, uh, the breaking of kashrut, it is presented here in a way that uh, discourages such practices. Um, and um, finally, I would like to show an example that illustrates the problems with interpreting the nature of interwar jokes. Uh, so here we have a joke uh, which uh, first appeared uh, in the conservative and xenophobic Polish satirical magazine called Muha, it is on the left. And two weeks later, uh, it was published in a slightly altered for form uh, in the Yiddish magazine Der Moment. So the overtones of uh, the two jokes, due to the context uh, in which uh, they are placed, are fundamentally different. Even though the subject is the same, the joke concerns a Jew per se debtors. Uh, his identity is highlighted by his surname, uh, which uh, in the Polish version is uh, Rosenduft, and in the Yiddish version it is Silberberg. And in the first case, uh, it is a part, uh, this image is a part of long tradition of jokes about the greedy and ruthless uh, nature of Jews, uh, which are also present in this uh, Polish magazine. In the second case, it can perhaps be read in um, the tradition of Schmonces, which is the tradition of ridiculing Jewish uh, traits and vices, and it grows out of the Jewish um, community. Uh, it does not qualify as anti-Semitic uh, humor, although it has provoked resistance uh, in some Jewish circles. So in this case, uh, the same joke uh, on the one hand entertains uh, the audience of a uh, conservative anti-Semitic magazine, and on the other, it is taken up by Jews themselves because the, uh, the author of the illustration in that moment was Shia Feigenboim. Uh, we can also see uh, that the characters are depicted differently. In the Polish um, uh, magazine, they wear suits, uh, while in the Yiddish one, one of them has a coat, a beard and side locks, and the other uh, wears a kippah. And the problem in this case uh, concerns finding the boundary that distinguishes between acceptable and offensive humor. And the phenomenon of exaggeration um, of characteristic is included in the definition of the cartoon joke, but its reception is variable and uh, depends on cultural factors. Uh, perhaps this also indicates the universality of anti-Semitic tropes, uh, which may have been internalized by the same group to which they referred. And uh, certainly this example demonstrates the circulation of ideas and images, and also the problem of establishing a standard of humor um, which was on, in operation at the time. Uh, I do not have uh, time to talk more about the category of schmonces, uh, which was controversial and caused animosity um, between assimilated and not assimilated Jews. Uh, but I think that even this brief presentation gives you uh, the idea of the complexity and variety of uh, Yiddish cartoons. And uh, that is all. Thank you very much.